Hi, my name is Davida Galloway, co-owner of Hugh House. I'm a costumer, I'm a doer, I'm a community leader, I'm a community activist, black girl fly. So I've always been a creative individual. Uh, needless to say, I think it was cool uh, expressing my creativity through spoken word, through my wardrobe, as long as it was uh, a hobby, so to speak, growing up. But as soon as I started saying, oh, I want to do this for a living and turn it into a career, you know, my old school parents <laughs> weren't so hip to it, you know, cause they, you know, Looking back, I understood and understand that they just wanted the best for me and they didn't see any black creatives wanting to do what I do and being successful at it. So of course, you know, they were concerned. Um, so, you know, with that said, and since they were paying for college at the time, uh, you know, I applied to Chapel Hill and UNC Charlotte and got into both. Um, ultimately decided on attending UNC Charlotte because that's where all my friends were going. And so, you know, we were just gonna turn up, okay, in college. But, you know, during this time, though I enjoyed it, I definitely wasn't living the life that I wanted to live. I was living the life they wanted me to. Um, it was very safe, you know, my career and all of that at the time. And ultimately it just got to a point where I was unhappy, literally crying myself to sleep every night. And this is when I was pursuing my master's again at UNC Charlotte and just very, very disappointed, unfulfilled. Um, though outside looking in, you would think I was happy and successful because I was able to buy, you know, buy a car, buy a condo, those kinds of things. But, you know, ultimately I was miserable, even still. Um, and so this was during the time when Project Runway was on. Are you familiar with Project Runway? Okay, who doesn't know Project Runway? And so, um, I was like, yo, you know, if they can do it, so can I. So I decided to take a chance on myself and my creativity. And I applied to attend Parsons School of Design where they were shooting Project Runway at the time. And, um, you know, weeks later, I just remember getting this notice in, in, in my mailbox and I opened it and I literally fell to the floor having been accepted into Parsons. And so that was the confirmation that I needed or looking back thought I needed to pursue me and my life. Um, graduated with my master's and literally passed my diploma off uh, my my diploma off to my parents and I was in New York attending Parsons as well as working at anthropology um, got into a little you know trouble <laughs> trouble trouble came calling uh, to me uh, in New York and I definitely just lost myself in the moment and I stopped going to Parsons no matter of fact I dropped out of Parsons simply because I was tired of school and I was tired of my professors uh, wanting to know why I chose this fabric, why did I render it this way? And you know, for me, I'm an artist, I move based on emotion and how I feel. And so I chose this skirt because I wanted to, um, and I chose this fabric because I liked it, you know? And those kinds of answers and replies, you, that's not how, right, right. No one wants to hear that in an academic setting, right? And so at that point I was like, I'm done, I'm done. And so I took matters into my own hands. Uh, now, trouble happened, and I'm not gonna go into detail because y'all can Google it or you can contact me later and we can talk about specifics. But ultimately, um, you know, my family, they literally swooped in, packed up my apartment. And so I'm home, Winston, depressed, not knowing what to do. And one night, um, this is gonna sound so cliche and maybe kind of lame, but this is what happened. Like I literally found myself again, found my creative passion uh, just laying at night and I just started doodling and those doodles became, became sketches, became poems, became me expressing myself and telling my story. I know we were talking about the statistic where what 8.5% of the creative class jobs are held by persons of color. We know that is inaccurate, right? Well, we, specifically black. Well, specifically black, exactly. 8.5%, yeah, 8 which means that one, 
we our stories aren't being told our names aren't being said you know there's certainly a gap and so for us to be able to bust that thought you know a wide <laughs> open because we know the talent is there like we know the talent is there so we can just usher in you know more and more like generations herds of us and if, if our stories up. are being told and again i, I believe they are through fashion mm -hmm. um, and things of that nature. Our stories are being told, but rarely are they being told by us. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. So by owning us. our narrative, yeah. owning our story yeah. and things of that nature, oh, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah. I think it's just so dope that we're able to be in boardrooms looking like this, like with grills, with braids, with tattoos, like, and we're capable. Sure. And I think our presence, people need to see us. They need to see an agency looking like this, showing up like this, letting them know they're not alone. Like it's tough. We represent a gang of people, a gang mm -hmm. of people who look just like us and just need and want access and opportunity and for their voices to be heard. Also, you know, one of the things that I, I say often is like, what I look like has nothing to do with what I'm capable of doing. But what I look like and what we bring to the table informs like everything yeah. that we do though, you know, yeah. everything. Sure. So no. I think that's dope that we are, we're leaning into that more. People need sure. to see that. In terms of Hugh House, I bring community. I bring the gang of black, black and brown creatives with me. Like I represent them again, because I am them. I know their stories. I know their passions. I run into them every day. I talk to them every day. I know what they need. I know that they need platform. I know that they want and need opportunity and are deserving of opportunity just as they are. Their unique voice and perspective is hella important, is hella valid, and I'm here. We are here to propel that, period. My greatest asset um, would be my realness, my authenticity. Uh, my feminine flair, you know, I'm the, the, the chica, the female of the team, right? Um, also my get it done spirit, my mentality, like I am not a quitter. There's a way to get it done. You know, if you can think of it, if you can dream of it, there's certainly a way to make it happen and realize the thing. Uh, I'm certainly a doer. So I think all of those assets, uh, I, I definitely bring to this trio.